Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a live Linux distribution based on Debian Bullseye. Additionally to this live distribution, I want to spice it up, I want to add it Docker on top of the ISO image to have a fully functional Docker installation. Everything's going to be virtualized using the software virtual box and it's going to be using the recipe uh, in my GitHub repository, Linux Denos. When I follow actually the particular uh, Cherudon Docker, actually is going to build a distribution with Docker. If you choose not to use Docker, you can always fall back on the default Cherud version without Docker, which is the minimum install, or you can choose any of the other ones like E17, GNOME, i3, KD, or some other ones. The software is recorded using the software ShareX in Windows. So without all the to do let's go ahead and get started the platform we're running right now is in a x ubuntu machine if we can see the cat uh, release is here uh, the name is groovy in ubuntu based in ubuntu 2010 this installation in the hard drive is taking about in this case it's large because i have some other things installed about 13 gigs but um it doesn't have to be that large uh, the other part is actually using 512 megs of ram and as you can see, the return the screen, share, screen fetch. This is the environment it's running XFC. So, uh, logging to the machine just from a uh, party session, we can see that we're in a home directory. Then, as both sides, there's no files in the file system. So, what we want to do, we want to start getting from the repository uh, and then as they get started. There's a shell script, which is the Denos Deno, get started. You can see the raw. Well, I can copy the URL and from the URL I can just get a wget that file. Change permissions, execution, and uh, I need to contact uh, Just go ahead and uh, get, it get started, which is a bunch of wgets right here, downloading and getting the files. I'm just going to set all the permissions for my files. I should be able to get everything ready. And once I have all the files downloaded, and you can see that actually Denos config, uh, live boot Denos, which is fine. Uh, Denos, I want to do Denos Docker. I'm going to call it distro. My hostname is going to be Denos, which is good. It's going to be based on version 11, which is by to match it doesn't have to be just to be whatever you want really that's arbitrary uh, so let's go ahead and do script it's five scripts the first one is just free regs basically you want to make sure that the host environment where you're running the scripts has the dependencies or the software required to perform all the other files it's like free rec so it's going to call it and if you have any questions there's some other videos previously Feel free to take a look to the GitHub repository, everything that it does. Once we have that, let's go and do uh, the bootstrap. The bootstrap is basically getting a minimum version of Debian built as a pre-stage environment in order to build your own Linux distribution. If you ever had a chance to go through the process to install Linux from scratch, that's very similar to what that does. It actually starts with a temporary pre-stage file system when everything's going to be preparing and pulling. It's like paving the foundation for the real for the real files, for the real linking, for the real compiling. So this is like a little minimum system what actually is going to be uh, everything required. And once you're there, you basically travel into that environment, which is exactly what we want to do. The only difference between Linux from scratch and this is this one is using the dev bootstrap, as you can see, all the libraries, libcl, that user, libaudit, base file, bash, libz, core, is actually happening magically. This dev bootstrap is making our life a whole lot easier. Now, if you want to, if you're a master geek, if you want to go to that, they can do it to Linux from scratch. It's a great, it's a great reading. It's a great exercise. I have another video there uh, in the repository. I have to go through that some scripts to let you walk through, make it really easy. I think you can potentially pass those ones to the CI CD pipeline in GitLab or something. I think that'd be a kind of cool just for fun exercise. 
But basically, this is what it's doing. Script number two is actually pre-staging, downloading, extracting, unpacking, and pre-staging your uh, minimum temporary environment where you want to root to actually build your own system. So uh, once that happens, once that completes, it's also going to copy the zero three scripts, shell scripts, so you can choose which one you want to execute, as I was mentioning, with the addition of the I've done previous videos for the minimum system, but right now this is going to be based on Docker. So I want to be using the one is actually listed as the Docker file. So, file the whole within the terminal environment. Now it's actually getting real. Now it's actually downloading everything that is going to be needing. It's going to download it, it's going to get in the files required. To, it's almost feeling like a you thing, like this second building, but it's actually it's required. It's almost like one of those things. What is first, the egg or the chicken, right? Which start first, you start come back. It seems like you go in circles, but actually, this is what is going to be ending and leaving in your system. If you're wondering what is actually is added, the only script that has been added here, the one we're executing is the one with Docker, and it's, it's basically based on the minimum distribution. The only thing that it was added is the Docker files, the Docker installation. So it is. But basically, it's just the minimum install. So it's going to be command line. Um, I didn't know to choose or modify nothing to create any line users. So I'm going to do for a set up the root password, which I want to set up in a minute, in a few. Uh, typically, just for this demo images, I put Tor, uh, root password Tor, just to keep things simple. It's just for just for fun and for playing for now. If you want to build something in an environment later, of course, it's advisable that you choose something much more complex than Tor. But uh, TOR is typically a bit easy to set up for some of the less considered home lab environment, which is presumably considered secure. Uh, so basically, this this uh, the bootstrap process again. Is getting all the packages, is getting everything that is actually declared within the shell script. Also, it's going to be actually taking the uh, installation of the Docker files. It's going to have another 300 megs, but of course, everything's going to be compressed onto, onto an ISO, so no worries there. And uh, once you get there, uh, it's going to just prompt us for the locales and uh, the keywords. So let's set up the root password and then we can exit from the um, Cherub environment to go for the real, where the real work is, is going on. Some of the things that we can see here, if we can actually this machine has uh, four C ports if you use right now, it's not taking a whole lot. But we see that actually, once we get into the beef of building the squash image, because this is downloading, unpackaging, just putting things in place, of course, you have to be waiting on the download and, and copy and compressing and putting the right things in the right place. Uh, this is not taking, I mean, as, as much as you would think, the crunching the numbers for the squash file system. So here we go. I want to use a English of my setting on locales, and uh, right now it's going to ask me for a root password. Uh, well, it's actually going to carry with the dependencies for the installation on um, Docker. Here's the part where we pass the default install, the minimal install. It's actually now getting the dependencies for Docker, so it's, it's doing pretty good. Of course, if you have some other distribution you wanted to do it yourself, you can always modify the script and just add as many packages as needed your particular custom distribution, of course. And uh, it's just getting Docker installed, getting package and everything ready, including the Python, lib Python libraries. Um, package, package manager is a beauty. He's really doing, doing a great job. Um, I think um, it's probably one of the main things that makes a Linux distribution, the package manager. Because managing the files, that was one of the main things that Slackware has back in the day. Slackware has a, a lot of 
ability to customize but you become a little messy how to handle all those dependencies here we go good password all right we have that good password okay. from the root environment and right now we can actually set up the mix wise this is going to take some time go by the screen as you can see this is flatlining the mix wash process is actually flatlining the um, See right here at the bottom right, four percent. It's moving, it's spinning, and right here in the center, you can see from the host machine which is building it, it's flatlining 100 percent the CPU. This process is very intense, uh, CPU intensive. Uh, memory not so much. We're looking at like 796 megs. I just recorded a video for Dev One, which is a uh, report from Debian without System D, and it's about the same. So they are the same, 750. This is taking for a little longer, but uh, as you can see, the four the four cores that I built is just to make this this time shorter because it's really this part of the process is, is quite CPU intense. I can hear the fan of the laptop right now spinning. This is the part actually is, is taking a lot of heat on the CPU, but um, one CPU takes a lot longer. For CPUs and some run, it definitely makes things uh, faster. Not quite perfect, but faster. And uh, eventually, this is going to jump from 35%, jump to 60, and eventually 90. So it's not always going to be that slow. I'm just going to be making some time. It's going to be moving forward and just making some time. But uh, what is going to depend the installation of your online distribution, of course? If you use the memory and the building host once it's built and you have your ISO, it doesn't take as much. You can just use one CPU, virtualize two gigs of RAM that we know, and you can have everything working. Especially if you want to run a container, so you need to run uh, more RAM. You need to have more RAM to be able to download images and do things because all the binary is going to be in the ISO image in the live CD running in RAM. You need to get more RAM to run. Those images and of course, a live Linux distribution is not for everybody. Not everything uh, is the same use case. Just specific use cases where this could be very, very powerful. But uh, again, it's not for everybody, not for all the use cases. Here we go, we still flatlined, we're dropping 57%, currently flatlining. But you can see that actually we achieved this one and the flatline should go away. CPU just go back to normal. Good. Finish your big job, big task. That's what I'm going to do the last part, which is the actual field of the ISO image. That's very quickly. And uh, here we go. We have in about 515 megs a Debian live distribution in an ISO. Let me go ahead and copy this part. Let's see. I copy the file. Put it here, then pass Docker. Copy the file to Windows, ACP. It's because the local machine should be really fast. Here we go, and then we can go to VirtualBox. Let me go ahead and create a new virtual machine, which is going to be live. Then us. Uh, it's going to be a Linux machine. No, it's not Oracle Linux, it's actually other Linux. Let's give it about 2 gigs of RAM. I don't want a hard disk. Um, right here, let me go ahead and just select the Then OS Docker and boot it. So this is going to be text mode. I'm going to change the font view screen to 150% so you can see better. Then OS Docker live. And we, we change those arbitrarily from the config file, remember? Um, 
live video is fine. Uh, and uh, so I continue booting, and then we go. Here we go. So he's using 150 megs of RAM only. Can you believe that? This is so, so small, but in the same token, let's take a look to the Docker. Yes. Docker. Docker. Nginx. And it's going to start downloading the Nginx image. What was the. Um, there was some way we can actually run a Docker. It's a very documentation. No, this is not this official image documentation. Here we have a uh, um, something like this Docker run. Here we go. So we can do Docker run name. My engine X. That's the four. Maybe nothing with a X because we have this an image, right? Is there? Yes, is running. Pearl. Voila, is running engine X. Um, and of course, you can run any kind of uh, any kind of um, Docker container, and um, that's it. In a nutshell, uh, we have um, live distribution uh, Debian operating system with um, functional Docker that boots and runs Docker in 515 megs that you can actually move this to explore around uh, what not, just add more things as we can see we just download an image in GeneX still, what is the memory is running? 166 this is ridiculously really small we still have a long way to go again for a live distribution I think it's uh, pretty good it's not for everybody, and the good thing is you can create your own one, and you can definitely um, have fun and learn, not just with Linux, but also with virtual sessions, with Docker containers and things like that. Hopefully you enjoyed. Give a thumbs up if you like it. Have a good day. Be safe, and thank you for watching.